The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648 or internationally at 727 873 7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the January 16th, the Thirsty Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always have, should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Sorry about that, folks. A little multitasking going on here. And you can see I, I got off task. But I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can... Uh, when you, and, when you and I can make that little two-by-four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on it at 877-927-6648. We'd love to talk to you. And if you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered. But do me a favor, send those emails early. Steve at tfnn.com is the email address. Please put radio show question in that subject heading. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So we only have one request so far. So let's go get to that. Uh, well, first, let's take a look at what the markets are doing here as of uh, 108 in the afternoon. We've got all the indices in the green, as you can see. The Dow's up 167 points, about six tenths of a percent to the upside. Uh, it's the Russell 2000 that's leading the charge up a little over 1%. That's up 22 points. She's printed out at 1894. Uh, spot volatility next trade out at 1220. Gold's down about three bucks, over about four pennies. Light speed crude is up nearly 96. Cents. Natural gas is up a couple of pennies. And bonds, 30-year treasuries down 17 ticks out there. Lead the charge dollar-wise, the upside. It's Expo Logistics, XPO Logistics up 12 bucks, 14%. Signet Jewelers is up $9 or 42%. Wow, big move there. Uh, Equinix is up 8 bucks. Nice LTD is up $7. To the downside, dollar-wise, booking holdings off 17 bucks. Tesla down 14 Regenerant Pharmaceuticals off 8 ICU Med down 7 Biogen off about 6 buckaroonies. But let's go to our first question out there. The first question coming in from James. And James wanted to take a look at a thorough... Uh, look at the uh, U.S. Home Construction ETF. That is the ITB. And uh, uh, James is looking to go long and uh, primarily because of the breakout that we can see that's going on. In fact, if I go ahead and we pull the ITB back about as far as we can go, you can see that uh, we're at a new all-time high and prices breaking above this little shooting star candle here from uh, January back in 2018. James wants to go ahead and take a long position inside the ITB because of this breakout. So let's go take a look at now prices above. It's not only is it breaking out above prior highs, it's above all of our daily, weekly, monthly profiles out there. So let's go see uh, what kind of advice we can give to James out here. Let's take a look at the daily time frame chart. So on a daily basis, uh, today is uh, James is going to be bar number nine of AT set up nine count. You might ask me, well, does that really matter here? And I would say that the last time that the ITB formed a, a top out here is trying to pull something up. Give me a second here. Uh, maybe won't let me do that. All right. Screw that. I'm sorry about that. You didn't hear that. Uh, if we take a look right back here on October 26th, Really, there were two patterns that were going on here, James, but there was that was a TD setup nine count top, and then price went ahead and pulled back. So um, today and tomorrow would not be the ideal day to enter because of that potential topping pattern and signal uh, that is out there. So I would just be patient. 
I would say, why don't you take a look at it on Tuesday, right? The markets are closed on Monday for L uh, Martin Luther King. Um, and so why don't you wait until Tuesday slash Wednesday before you would, that's what the daily time frame chart is suggesting. Let's go look at the weekly time frame chart. What do we have in the weekly time frame chart? You had mentioned specifically about the Chapman wave counts and you were looking at the monthly time frame chart. And we'll get to that. But here, what I wanted to share with you is on the weekly time frame, you can see you've got the Rhodes momentum indicator bottom back in 2019 that had formed. Uh, what I have this in on the uh, weekly basis is wave number seven. Now, wave number seven, that's letter G on my screen out here. That is uh, the seventh letter of the alphabet because the numbers are the TD set up nine counts. So you've got uh, wave number seven this week. This would also suggest laying low. Not that wave number seven is absolutely going to create a uh, top or not, but it is a topping signal out there. So you've got that on the weekly and on the daily. What you've got is a TD set up nine count pattern. Both suggest just being a little bit cautious. Price on the weekly, moving higher, doing less relative energy out there. Back to the monthly. If you're just simply going to make your decisions based on the monthly and not on what's going on in the daily and the weekly, then you got to go for it. Of course, you were saying, hey, we're only in wave number two, or which would be letter B on my screen on the monthly basis. Absolutely. Uh, what we don't know is at the end of the month, is price going to be able to close over the high from January of 2018? Because that is resistance out there. Um, there is no other topping pattern that we have. Price is above the TD setup nine count high. That was the bar following bar number uh, nine. That was the month of uh, November of last year. So, uh, but we need to see what this month's close is. And so you could be jumping the gun early, at least with regard to the daily and the weekly. Let those patterns play out. And so uh, my suggestion, James, is wait until we come back next week on Tuesday. Uh, send me another email if you would. We'll take a look at it, see how things, had, uh, things have traded uh, since then. So thanks for writing in. I hope that that helps you out. Folks, I'd love to hear from you as well. So it's 877-927-6648 or steve at tfnn.com. And of course, inside the Tiger's Den, just any ping will do. So let's go surf around here and uh, check out the uh, market. So I do see I've got a couple of questions that have come in. Some of these are from you. So let me get to these. Well, we got a minute to go. What can I share with you in this minute uh, to win it that um, uh, that that you've got to be that we should be concerned with? I'm going to pull this over here because uh, be careful about the celebration that is going on. If we take a look at now. Here's the ES Mini, the NQ, and the Dow. If I were to add the Russell 2000 to this, you would see the same pattern. Each of them show this is a daily time frame. Each of them show. Rhodes momentum indicator signals that are ongoing right now doesn't tell us whether these are going to happen or not. The last time, normally when we get these topping patterns, the Rhodes momentum indicator topping signal out here, we don't get them all fired up at the same time. In fact, I went back through my charts, went back to, I could go back to 2002. Let's see where I could find it. I believe it was in 2010. Where are those black arrows? I put the black, there we go. In 2010, here we go. In 2010, now these were all confirmed. In 2010, we had the same thing going on, all at the same time. Now, when they did confirm, they led to a nice decline that lasted uh, several weeks out there. And uh, so I just... The, the, be careful the celebration that everybody is, uh, is going through, that, that we are experiencing inside the markets here. I wish I could tell you whether this pattern is going to uh, occur or not. What I do know is you've got to be bullishly cautious. And if they all three or all four do confirm at the same time, get ready. Get ready for a move to the downside. Steve Rhodes, right now. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 165, S&P about 18 points. Let's go to our next question. Our next pe question coming in from uh, John in Sarasota, and his question is, uh, CGC up or down? CGC is uh, Canopy Growth uh, Corp out here, and uh, let's answer it uh, this way, John. Let's answer it based upon the data and what it tells us. So right now we're looking at we're going to come to the end of the week tomorrow, and if uh, CGC is going to break out, let me just expand this chart out here. If CGC is going to break out, then what you should see is a close above the top of the weekly profile. So come tomorrow to answer your question. The market's going to answer the question for you. And that is if you see CGC close above 24.49, then it says that there's a change in trend. If we take a look at the uh, CGC right now, it's tested and it's rejected uh, that level. So watch 24.49. Now, what we have going on on the weekly time frame is, uh, which is up at resistance, is matching a little bit about what we see on the daily time frame. What do you mean, Steve-O? Well, there's an A to B equals CD pattern from the uh, low out here back on November 20th. And even though price hasn't hit the one-to-one -one price target, which is 26.92, it's really close enough for me in my work out here. And today you've got a bearish reversal candle. Um, so the... The answer right now, John, is that price is up, is up at resistance. We're seeing the potential of a topping signal. It's matching up with resistance on the weekly. But I wouldn't make that call right now until we see where it closes tomorrow. So you've got the information that you need. You're loaded and ready to bear. And if this is just a retracement, 
or a top, a short-term top, or some type of top, then the first level of support would be about 2206, and then the next level about 2168 to the extent that you're looking to try to get into canopy growth. CGC is the name. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Tony writes in, and Tony wants to take a look at ticker symbol BLUE. Is that Blue Nile? Just, uh, uh, it is, no, it's not. It's Bluebird Bio, B-L-U-E, out here. And the question is, I am long from about 76. I would like to hold the stock in your portfolio. Trade out at 95. Well, right now, it's trading above the top of its daily profile, so that's good, above the weekly. And it's trading with inside the uh, monthly profile. So your next resistance area, based on TAS market profiles, are at the 101.84, you're at 97.24. I'm not saying to sell it there. I'm just saying that's where your resistance level is. Now, let's go take a look at the daily time frame chart out here. You want to hold it for the long term, but we'll just quickly take a look at the daily. The daily uh, is uh, giving us an indication of an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Let's go take a look at the volume matrix of this. It's going to be easier if we switch to my e-signal charts out here. Um, so the volume, the swing point is basically choose the one that's maybe more difficult. So December 24th, yeah, half a day, 743,000 shares. The next one, 1.1 million shares. That's from December 26th. And you're 1.5. So, yeah, it looks like you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside out here. So you still got to realize you've got that resistance on that weekly on that weekly chart. It actually looks like the B point was right here. Doesn't matter. That was even well, 1.8 million versus 1.4. Yeah. So looks like you're going to have it at this stage of the game. And that A to B equals CD gives you a one to one price projection out here. Tony in the 108.63 level, 115.26 would be another area. So no reasons. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. No reasons for you to uh, close out that uh, trade or anything, or you want to hold it. Uh, the weekly time frame, let's take a look and see where we're at on the weekly. It looks like on the weekly, it's going to be week number seven of a TD setup nine count. This did form a bottom with a TD nine count out here. So it would suggest uh, paying attention. Now, on the weekly chart, Tony, you've got resistance at 108.15. What you don't really want to see is you want to see bar number nine, form below 108.15. Now, it's week number seven, so you've got a couple more weeks before that could occur out there. Uh, because if you do get a topping pattern that occurs prior to resistance, eh, not really the best of scenarios out there. But it does look like price wants to run into that 108.15 level. And then lastly, let's go look at the monthly time frame chart. Remember, we've got 101.84 as a resistance out there. If price can get through that, then it should move up to test DB's red line. So green moved to red out here for blue, uh, this blue bio. And on the longer term base, because you're looking for a long term hold in your position, when that turns from green to red, which it did last uh, month or this month out here, it tells us its price oscillator is uh, is at the zero area. So now you've got a falling price oscillator below zero because it changed colors. There's this phenomena associated uh, with this uh, pattern that suggests that uh, price and that line will catch up to each other. Now, the line is printing out at 114.45, uh, but that will continue. That could continue to rise or fall. But use that as a general 114, 115 area. So everything looks good out here at this stage of the game. Um, watch that 10184 move above that should get you towards that 114 to 115 area. Tony, I hope that that helps you out. Best of luck with Bluebird Bio. Next question coming in from Ken in Wyoming. Ken wants to take a look at the UNG. And if we're going to look at the UNG, that means we've got to go take a look at the natural gas contract, which is in the process of rolling over from February to March out here. If we take a look at the uh, February contract, that is still what makes up the entire holdings of UNG that may begin to change by the end of the day. Uh, Ken, the only thing that I can share with you with regard to UNG, which really means taking a look at the daily time frame chart for its underlying instrument, the actual futures contract, you can see the butterfly buy pattern that formed up. It's also an A to B equal CD to the downside, a 1 to 1.618. You got your bearish engulfing candle that form. Let me give you the day on that. That was 
That formed out here on January 6th. That was your first bullish indication that this is trying to form a bottom. The next one came a few days later on January 9th when you got a nice little hammer candle. Um, that's still the that low has held. It would really be the low of January 3rd if there was a close below that. That would suggest lower price, lower price to take it at uh, buck 93 or so. Uh, can't really get a whole lot of movement though here in natural gas. But if you're asking me, does it have a valid bottoming pattern? Uh, for its daily time frame, Ken, the answer is uh, yes. And really, you've got to be uh, in the UNG. I'm not sure when it all rolls over, but it's between now and, and a week from now, a uh, week from tomorrow. Um, you know, pay attention to those futures contracts out there. To go into the profiles here and what shows up on the screen for UNG, uh, I would do you injustice. I'm not going to do that. So, Ken, I hope that helps answer your question with regard to natural gas. Next question, well, we're just rolling through these uh, nicely here. There's uh, room for more, folks, so you can give me a uh, call at 877-927-6648, or you can, uh, you can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Um, whoa, that didn't help out. I was in the wrong spot. BKCC is the ticker, ticker symbol. And uh, HD wants to go take a look at this, thinking about a long here. And that is BlackRock Capital. So let's go take a look at uh, BlackRock. BKCC, again, is the ticker symbol. Trading above, has been trading for the last four or five days above the top of its daily profile. It's trading above the weekly profile, trading inside the center of its monthly profile. Resistance here, first level resistance, 510. The high so far this week is 507. You need to see price move above 510 to then possibly bring up about the 544 area. You're thinking of going long. Let's take a look at the daily time frame chart. Daily time frame chart here. Um, you know, we can see the nice roads momentum indicator bottom, but that was way back here on November the 2nd. Uh, today looks like it will be, could be, may not be. Looks like this TD setup nine count uh, could possibly vanish by the end of the day. That is if there is a close below. You might know. Oh, we'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 162, S&P 17 points. Let's go back. We're taking a look at uh, BlackRock out here for HD. And as we take a look at uh, BlackRock, you want to go long. So I don't see uh, – so the question is, you know, this is pulling back. And if this can hold – CV's green line. Let me, let me give you the exact number out here. So if this is just a normal pullback to test support, you've got both the top of its profile as well as its oscillator and change line. And that's actually uh, printing out at exactly five buckaroonies out there. You're at 502. So another couple of pennies. Is that right? Is that really right? Yeah, it is right. Um, so about five bucks is where you should find support on the uh, daily time frame. If it closes below, well, let's say if it closes back inside its daily profile out here, let me pull this over, uh, that's, it. that's also at 5 bucks. So we've got everything at $5. That's your support level. Any close below $5 could bring 496 or 492 into play. 495 is the top of the uh, weekly profile. Speaking of the weekly chart out here, as we pull this open, I don't have any kind of topping, bottoming signal. Just 541 is a level of resistance should this continue to move higher. And on the monthly time frame out here, HD, uh, this does show a nice bottoming pattern. It shows the Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Uh, that was back in November when we saw a nice bullish piercing candle form. Uh, price was unable to close above Stevie's red line last month. It's trading slightly above it right now. So I can see the reason to entertain a long position inside of uh, BlackRock. Uh, I would wait to see what happens at that $5 area out there. So HD, I hope that helps you out. I do see you wanted to ask about URA. So let's go ahead and do that. That is the uranium ETF out here. And as we take a look at it right now, price is trading above the daily, above the weekly profile, but in between its monthly set of profiles. <clears throat> that's between 1057 at the low and 1147, which is the uh, top of the profile. So you want to go along there. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at so you just have a, like a sideways-ish consolidation out here on the daily time frame. You know, there was certainly a bottom. This this bottom uh, made a low on December 4th with TD set up nine count. Uh, but then price went ahead and made its way up to resistance, 11.15, and pulled right back down to retest those lows out. So what I see out here, HD, is a consolidation on the daily time frame. Um, that doesn't mean that price won't run back up to 11.15. You're at 10.96, but you're really kind of in the middle. You know, does it run back up to 11.15 or does it run back down into the um, 10.75 area out here? And I don't know the answer uh, to that. I don't see anything out here to give me a signal. Um, let me look at the monthly chart real quickly. I don't see any kind of signal out there. So but I really don't. So I think you just got to be patient out here. If you want to get into this and uh, see if the consolidation holds and buy the bottom of the consolidation. That's the best advice that I can provide to you. Hey, let's go out to Martinez, California and speak with uh, Brent. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this afternoon or this morning? I'm doing just great, Steve. Thank you for taking the call. Sure. My pleasure. Thanks for calling. And we're going to take a look at Mosaic Company. MOS, folks, is the ticker symbol. Uh, Brent, how can we help you today? I've talked to uh, you about this in the past. I was fortunate enough to get in like in the 18 range and then had a nice little run to give me a cushion and so I could kind of ride it out. And I was just, my question was, it looks like it might be uh, taken on that swing point from looks like right around the start of the year um, with, you know, maybe equal or greater volume. I just wanted to take a look at that on the daily and even the weekly, really, if you look at it. So, yeah. So, so, so good point out here and, and folks on January 2nd, of this year, 
Uh, this made a high at uh, 22.15. It did it with volume of 4.1 million shares. So far today, it's traded 3.4. So mathematically, seems like it's pushing into that swing point uh, with volume out there. That high again was 22.15. We're 22.07. The interest session high so far today has been 22.13. So you know, Tom always likes to say if it camps out just below that swing point with volume, it's getting ready to you know battle it and take it on and maybe uh, jump that creek, so to speak, out here. Um, I don't know if that's the case or not. What we can also take a look at when we look at Mosaic is not just that specific session, but where is other resistance out here? So the other resistance, even if price can clear that level out here, Brent, is at 2281. That's its CD9 count breakdown. That's from your candle session of September 17th, 2019. We can see other resistance out here just simply from a candlestick standpoint. That was the November 5th. Uh, shooting star candle out there. Um, so it does look like it does want to continue to move higher and take on those levels. Not clear whether or not it'll be able to clear that 2281 area. You know, clearing the uh, clearing that uh, January 2nd candle, closing above it with volume, you know, would give it some promise, but still resistance is resistance. The weekly time frame for us with regard to Mosaic, it's above the top of its weekly profile. Um, it's got a road momentum indicator bottom. I don't see anything out here resistance wise in the near future. And we do like the monthly so far, the month of January, where price is now above Stevie's red line. Um, so that's a positive and would say price could make its way eventually up to 3162 and you're 2212 now. So the answer to your question is, um, is what? What is the answer? Did I give you an answer? Uh, Brent? You gave me some good information. If you were to draw in that uh, AB equals CD, CD? What, 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 did, what would you come up with on the daily? Yeah. So let's go do that out here. It's going to be easier for everybody to see in the black background screens. Um, what I would do is uh, my A point would be right down here in the trading day of December 12th. That B point is going to be the high from January 2nd. And that C point was just a two day knee jerk reaction to the downside in the support on the uh, 6th of January. One to one, Brent takes you to 2485 um, in one to one point two seven two twenty six oh seven out there. So th those would be your price projections. I would still say that the uh, weekly resistance levels that we looked at will still come into play, even if this confirms an A to B equals CD to the upside. OK, well, thank you very much, Steve. I really appreciate it. You have a great day, and I'm sure we'll talk soon. That sounds great. We'd love that. That was Brent in Martinez, California, looking at uh, ticker symbol MOS. That uh, is Mosaic. Let me see if there's any questions here that have come in. Oh, I do see a few more. So uh, let's see here. All oh, these emails come in. Alex, whoops, sorry about that. Alex writes in and says, hey, Steve, using your seasonal timing, what will be an early sign that a correction of at least 10 percent is starting? An early sign, an, uh, an early sign. So how do I, how do we do the early sign? The earliest sign would probably be taking a look at the uh, short-term time frame chart, such as the ES Mini. Here's a 30-minute time frame, a 60-minute time frame, and a two-hour time frame. Uh, we can see that the uh, two-hour time frame, the very bottom panel, is in a TD9 count pattern out here. But to answer your question, the earliest signal that you would you could you would want to trade upon would be a break of support and here these red lines are td9 count support levels so on the 30 minute time frame you're looking at 3299 and 3279 out there that would be the earliest the five uh, the two hour chart says 3294 um, so that would be the earliest uh, but really you'd want to go ahead and combine that that would be combined with seeing some type of bearish reversal candle you know, on the, uh, the ES Mini, as an example. We'll further take a look at that for Alex when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000.
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the uh, ES Mini out here right now, uh, primarily because Alex wrote in. He asked the question, what's the earliest signal uh, that you, uh, you know, for, for the market in essence forming some type of top out there? We went to the 30-minute time frame chart uh, and, and looked at breakout levels. Uh, here's this is the daily time frame chart that we have. So I gave you the figure there, or the figures there, uh, Alex, on the 30-minute uh, time frame chart. But then you've got to come back to like take a look at the daily, right? Because even if you bust through support on those 30-minute time frames maybe all price is doing is just testing support on the daily ES mini which right now is at 3297.74 so 3297.75 would be the number we can see price is moving higher doing a less relative energy TD9 count top is uh, our pattern is going to be uh, in place uh, at the end of the day or so it would appear uh, so you've got to and there's an A to B equals CD. I just simply took that off the map out here. No, you know, just you, you can see that everybody can see that or you should be able to see that. So you've got three patterns out here to watch for. But you need to you need that bearish reversal candle close below Stevie's uh, green line out there. Maybe it's better for me to answer this question this way. I've given you the early signals and what to look for. But maybe the question because I don't want to confuse anybody. And that 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 means well, geez, I could get, I confuse myself sometimes, right? I think I was confusing Brent, and didn't mean to do that out there. But if we take a look at what would be what would be the more, the, how do we know if there's a change in trend? So I'm going to just simply uh, reframe Alex's question uh, to answer when would we know that we have some type of change in trend? 
So it's all about being able to bust through levels of support out here. And one of those levels that we would really be taking a look at are TAS market profiles. Now, it just so happens the NASDAQ, the NQ, uh, which has been leading the markets higher, actually has a new daily market profile. We took a look at one yesterday. I don't recall if the numbers changed or not, but these numbers are now solid. It's been in place for a couple of days. The other equity futures contracts do not have the pattern in place. The pattern is just really being able to identify resistance. So the answer to your question, Alex, if we were to see a close for two days below 89.40, that's the bottom of the NQ's daily profile, well, that would suggest to me that there is a change in trend that is underway out there. Now, that's going to be well after those early reversals that we looked at, but this is the information that's been provided to us, and therefore, this is the information I pass on to you. So I hope that that helps you out. Um, let me see if there's any other questions that have come in. Nothing inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, looks like we've gotten through everything here from all of the emails. So that means we should just go surfing out. Oh, my goodness, the surf. On uh, Friday and Saturday here, Saturday specific, was just gorgeous. Hey, you know, the East Coast surf is eh, so-so, uh, but it was looking a lot like the Pacific. Um, a couple of uh, last over the well on Saturday, fr Friday and Saturday it was looking just just gorgeous out there. In any event, you don't really care about the surf, do you? And Jay, you're welcome for that uh, profile information. But um, you know, this is this is this is the pause. This is the reason that uh, you know everybody that's high fiving out there gets to be careful. You know, here here's just simply taking a look at the cash indices. Even though I misspelled that up, up at the top, you got the cash indices, the S&P 500 sectors, uh, the index ETFs, you know, like spies, diamonds, Qs, and so forth, other popular ETFs out here. And then you've got your roads momentum indicator signals for the uh, daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame. We're certainly concerned about all of them for the monthly. Look at, look at all of these for the monthly and the daily. Um, now, look, price can continue to go higher. There are no bearish reversal candles out there. That would be one of those. Uh, that would be one of those important steps along the uh, process. Here, you can see the Nasdaq Composite uh, because it's got a star by it. Tells us that it's a uh, at this stage of the game, it's a valid TD nine count top on a weekly base, a uh, daily basis. So you've got that for the Nasdaq Composite. You've got that for the NDX one hundred. You've got it for the XLK. The XLC, the communications uh, sector, for the monthly time frame, you've got it for the consumer staples. Uh, so those are your topping signals out here and patterns. And then over on the right, you've got your different levels of support, whether it's daily, daily green red, red line, that's the OUL oscillator and change line. So you've got your daily, weekly, monthly um, uh, levels out there. And then you've got your levels of support or resistance for the uh, based upon the breakout or the break down areas out there. So it's really these first, uh, well, not the first two columns, but the three columns after that, that uh, should have all of us concerned. Now, really concerned if it turns into something. The only way it will turn into something, the first step here, because we're looking at daily, weekly, monthly, is going to be some type of bearish reversal candle on that uh, daily time frame out there. Uh, the question from Peter is, how close the small caps to their all-time high? So let's go take a look at the Russell 2000. Let's go put this on a um, quarterly time frame out here. And the uh, the all-time high, let's just pull this chart back here for you. The all-time high, is that an automated thing? or No, that might be. I uh, was uh, right back here at 1742, Peter. So 40 points away would uh, be the answer to that uh, question out there. There is an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside with a price projection of 1896. This is a quarterly chart. So that just simply is over time. So uh, I hope that answers your question with regard to the Russell 2000. Nice looking uh, move today, but that nice looking move today, if we were to go take a look at the cash indices, let's go ahead and pull those, uh, pull over the Russell 2000 and you're welcome. I just see what else is going on on its uh, chart out here. Here's the Russell. So we pull this over. So you can see the cash indices. Got that Rhodes momentum indicator signal that is present uh, in wave number five, as I've got it at this stage of the uh, game out here. And any pullback would look to find support at 1686. And below that, 1620 would be the price target to the downside. 
Um, so that's what's going on inside of the uh, Russell. We continue just taking a quick uh, peek around the uh, markets out here. If I take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, you know, what is present at the moment, it won't mean a thing. Uh, until we see a bearish candle, but we can draw it in. You've got, you've got a declining tops, advanced decline oscillator, and what you have is rising price. And also shown on this chart are other examples of rising price and declining tops, advanced decline oscillators. So that's another signal that says, hey, Steve-O, be cautious out here. Now, with regard to, uh, let's go take a quick peek, see if I can pull this up open pretty quickly here and what I was going to do is let's take a look at what's going on with the with regard to the um, with the equal weighted ETFs come on I know it's I know it's here somewhere quickly quickly uh, there we go so let's open up this page here looks like we'll get this done before the break just curious if there's any kind of divergence here um, and the answer is no both the equal weight for the S&P and the SPY itself are at new all-time highs. The same for the equal weight for the Qs and uh, for the QQQ itself. So no diverging pattern there um, to uh, worry about. So uh, so what else do we have? We don't uh, save that yet. We'll just save it, but we'll go ahead and get rid of it. So uh, nothing else really with regard to the equity. Uh, equity, you know, the other pattern that's going on out here, or at least it was this morning, yeah, you still have this rising bottoms pattern in the spot volatility index and rising price. All that's only going to matter if we get a bearish reversal candle and the spot volatility index trades above the 50-day exponential moving average. Good. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So no questions in the uh, coop, so to speak. So let's finish this off just simply by taking a look at the uh, ES Mini for the next couple of minutes out here. We'll go from the weekly and move our way back. So uh, uh, let's say a top does not form over the next couple of days out here. Where is the ES Mini targeting? Well, there's an A to B equal CD to the upside. Uh, if we go back here, uh, we can take a look at uh, that A to B equal CD pattern would take us up to about the 3373 level. Uh, we've got wave number uh, six, that's letter F on my screen. So the weekly doesn't really have any kind of, the ES Mini doesn't have any other kind of topping patterns in play. We would look for wave number seven, that'd be letter G. That would be a few weeks off at a minimum out here. If we look at the daily time frame, I think we covered this, but here just to re refresh our memory, uh, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. Uh, this is going to be bar number nine of a TD setup nine count. Tops can form on bars nine, eight, nine, or the bar following nine, that would be tomorrow. So that says that we could see a high tomorrow. If we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, oh, I'm sorry, you're not seeing my charts. What a shame that was to have blown that. Um, let me show you the A to B equals CD pattern here real quickly. So we'll do that on the weekly. So here's your A to B equals CD pattern. There's your 3373. There's your leg F to the upside on the uh, weekly time frame. Uh, we'd already taken a look at the daily earlier, so I won't do that. Your five-hour time frame chart, wave number seven, letter G. Price moving higher, doing with less relative energy out there. Needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm it, but nonetheless, topping signals are present. 240-minute time frame chart, what do we have? We've got wave number six, letter F, and we've got a rose momentum indicator and a TD9 count pattern that is present out there. If we take a look at the two-hour time frame chart, what do we have? Rose momentum indicator signal, TD9 count top, wave number six out there for the two-hour time frame. For the one-hour time frame, what do we have for the ES Mini? We've got price moving higher, doing less relative energy. Wave number seven, that's letter G, on my screen out there. So you see, no matter what time frame it is we come up with, there are just things to be cautious and concerned with. Nothing that has confirmed just yet. So it'll be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Meanwhile, folks, thanks so much for joining me here today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Funday, Friday. But stay tuned for two more great hours. David White's up next. Tom O'Brien to take us on home. And Stevie's side. I'll be back with you on Fabulous Friday. Take care and have a great day.